Good morning, boys and girls. Last week, we talked about how Jesus is the light in our world. And today, we're going to talk again about the body of Christ. Have you ever stubbed your toe? How did it affect your whole body? The Bible tells us that we are like parts of the body. When one part, or a person, doesn't do their job or its job, the rest of the body is affected. I remember one time I accidentally opened up the door um, to my room right over my toenail and it grabbed onto my toenail and ripped it off. It was horrible and I was miserable. My whole body wasn't the same. I'm going to read Corinthians 12, 12, or chapter 12, <laughs> verses 12 20 through 26. And while I read, I want you to think about how you can contribute to the body of Christ, and then we'll talk about it at the end of the lesson. Just as a bo just as a body through one, though one has many parts, but it all its many parts from one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. And here's the rest of it. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would for not it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? The whole, if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. All right, so let's see if this video can help us to better understand what the body of Christ is. One body, many parts. A person's body is one thing, but it has many parts. Yeah, there are many parts to a body, but all those parts make only mm, one body. Christ is like that too, but we were all baptized into one body through one spirit. And we were all made to share in the one spirit. So like we said, a person's body has more than one part. It has many parts. The foot might say, I'm not a hand, so I'm not part of the body. But saying this would not stop the foot from being part of the body. The ear might say, I am not an eye, so I am not part of the body. Saying this would not make the ear stop being part of the body if the whole body were an eye. The body would not be able to hear. You mean we couldn't hear music or funny jokes? Exactly. And if the whole body were an ear, the body would not be able to smell anything. Wait, wait, wait. You mean like cookies, flowers, nothing? You got it. Nothing. <gasps> If each part of the body were the same part, there would be nobody. God put the parts in the body as he wanted them. He made a place for each one of them. And so there are many parts, but only one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the foot, uh, Hey, mate, uh, I don't need you. Those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are really very, very important. God did not want our body to be divided. God wanted the different parts to care the same for each other. If one part of the body suffers, then all the other parts suffer with it. Or if one part of our body is honored, then all the other parts share its honor. All of you together are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of the body.
So how do we figure out what God is calling us to do to serve? Remember that we are all part of the body and we need to take care of that body. And by being here and learning about the Bible, you are taking care of your part of the body of Christ. What is something that you are that you are good at or enjoy doing? I enjoy helping others find the awesome in each day. I enjoy helping people make the most of each day and to see God's goodness. I have been teaching for a very long time, and I think I'm pretty good at it. And um, I also have my podcast called Your Daily Dose of Awesome. And I use these talents to teach you about Jesus. And I have my podcast and a blog and a journal to teach people how to see our blessings in each day. Think about what you enjoy, or, or I'm sorry, think about what you enjoy doing or what are your talents. Maybe you're good at singing or acting. You probably use those talents at church during worship. Many of you sang and performed at church and in turn are helping others to worship and learn about Jesus. Once we know our roles, we are to work hard and persevere through our roles. So why should we work hard? Well, we're here to work hard for Jesus. And when we do that, we help others. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. For example, here is a photo of my classroom before the first day of school. I had to work very, very hard to keep my room clean and spacious. So that required a lot of time. I had to get rid of lots of furniture. And if you look at the picture there, those are the plastic shields that the kids have on their desks, in addition to also wearing their masks. And if you're going back to school in person, you will definitely see lots of changes. And I did all of this to help keep the kids safe at school. But I also know that Jesus wants me to do my best so that I can help others even better. So, I mean, it's easy to sometimes not work very hard, but um, if I didn't, I don't know if the kids would be as safe. So I always want to be working hard for Jesus, and when I do that, I know I'm helping others even better. So um, we did everything that we knew and everything that we could to keep everybody safe at school. Finding our role in the church is kind of challenging right now since we aren't actually in the church building. However, I challenge you to think about how you can still remain a part of the church body even though we aren't meeting together at the church building. We might not be able to meet there, but we are still part of the body of Christ. There is one opportunity right now where you can use your writing talents to serve Jesus and others. And that is to get a pen pal. A pen pal is kind of an old school thing. And when I was little, I had a pen pal who lived in Hawaii. And it was so awesome. And she sent me like this Hawaiian hat. And I got all sorts of cool things from Hawaii and got to learn about where she lived. Um, but a pen pal is, uh, it's like a, it's when you write back and forth to someone on paper. So it's not like you're texting or emailing, but you write it on paper and then you send it through the mail. And you would also get letters in the mail, too, which is also really fun. One of our friends works at a nursing home, and there are several elderly people who would love a pen pal right now that live at that facility. So if you're interested, have your parents contact the church, and we will pair you up with a pen pal. I already have a pen pal, and her name is Muriel, and I really enjoyed writing to her, and hopefully soon she'll write me back. I haven't heard back from her yet, so we just started, but this is a good way to use your skills. You all know how to write, and if you're just learning, this is a great activity that your parents can help you with. What are other ways you can be a part of the body of Christ? I would love to hear about what you're doing. I know someone who even had a lemonade stand and then donated the money. And you can do something like that, too. Many families are without jobs right now, and if you made some money from a lemonade stand, you could buy some food and donate it to a food bank. Right now, we all have to think creatively as to how we can continue to show Jesus to others through our actions. All right, so let's pray. So come and get really still and quiet and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for this time together. Help us to find ways to be part of your body. 
in these challenging times. Amen. As I was putting this lesson together, I stumbled upon a little song that I think you guys are going to like with Mr. Potato Head about the body of Christ. So I'm going to go ahead and let this play, and I hope to see you next week. Now you, you, you are the body of Christ. Now you, you, you are the body of Christ. Yeah, you are the body of Christ.